Okay, the webinar is now live on YouTube. Uh, Ari and Yudi, please start recording the webinar. Okay, and now the webinar is live. Please kindly to I will kindly for all the panelists to turn off the camera and uh, and mute the mic as we are going to loop TVCs first. Thank you. Kayu di tangan itu. About thirty reporters are on the ground working undercover. Kurzane, ich fange da zum Team der Gelder. Il fallait aussi que je prenne affaire pour les milliards de gars ma tête. Je m'appelle Martha, j'ai 20 ans. Euh, je viens de Belgique euh, et je suis actrice. What is your dream film project? My dream is to work in as many countries as possible in as many languages as possible. I'm writing on it. One that I would make? Working in Spain with uh, Ken Loach doing Land and Freedom was possibly my dream film project. My dream is to be in a Star Wars film. To play in a movie where I'm like a female Joker or something like very dark. Maybe I, I want to play a woman one day. That would be beautiful. To have opportunity to do this job, that's all. <laughs> I would like to make an historic movie. A sci-fi movie. I love science fiction. That is the film that I know will become a success before I make it. I'm working on it right now, maybe. All the film I didn't do yet. It's always the next film. It's always about the next film. We all love stories. We all love stories. We all love stories. We all love stories. Indang apotek kok kondao sih, Shay? Kayaknya bakal ada pengumuman penting ya. Pengumuman penting? Pengumuman apaan? Jadi gini, 100% manusia film festival, tahun ini ada lagi. Hah? Oh, oh, gimana caranya, Ren? Kita kan lagi pandemi. Emang rencana lo kayak gimana? Jadi, kita akan online. Online-nya di Festival Scope. Let's go! Yeay! Yeay! Guys, 
masih meeting gak sih? Not a very good state of affairs, Mrs. Jones. Not a very good state at all. There must be something you can do. Said he copied all the words from the boy next to him. That's showing some initiative, right? He got zero, Peter. Even though he copied, he still got zero. Your son is out of control. life without being able to read or write or, or to be able to communicate yeah michael spelled m i c a l Subur, oke sumber, oke kuone, bisa ke ngairi sawah kulan, sawah sampai wong sing urep nang lereng lereng gendeng. Biasanya aksi ini kan tujuannya kepengen biaya carane ono kerampungan tentang konflik penting ini. Bapak cerita nong aku neng pati kerap ono rencana pabrik semen menggone gunungnya gendeng di kerok. Enggak sumber-sumber sedo hilang, sering ada bencana. Bertani, bertani untuk kehidupan. Kanda lumbung petani, akan ku jaga sampai mati. Masih kayak kamu mau ajuh lah, Jose Maria. ¿Cómo vamos a transmitir esto? Dígame. ¡Apúrese! Vámonos de aquí ya. Pero allá no hay nada, José María. Halo, selamat malam semuanya. Selamat datang di acara 100% webinar Diversity Capture. Selamat malam teman-teman, para media, dan juga rekanan 100% Manusia Film Festival. Perkenalkan, nama saya Menina Putri Wismuti. Saya kepala program film dari Festival Film 100% Manusia tahun ini yang juga merupakan moderator Anda di 100% webinar hari ini. Sebelumnya, 100% webinar ini merupakan program terbaru yang kami adakan di tahun ini ketika kami harus mengikuti dan beradaptasi dengan kenormalan hidup berfestival di mana kami harus memindahkan festival fisik festival film kami yang biasanya berlangsung secara fisik ke dalam format online. Nah, um, sebelum kita mulai, uh, saya ceritakan dulu tentang 100% Manusia Film Festival. Uh, seperti yang tadi saya ceritakan, tahun ini festival film 100% Manusia memang harus beradaptasi dengan situasi kenormalan hidup yang membuat uh, kebiasaan kita berfilm festival pun harus berubah. Tapi satu yang tidak berubah adalah kecintaan kami sebagai saya pribadi sebagai film programmer uh, kepada uh, kecintaan saya terhadap menonton film, terutama film-film pendek. 
kenapa saya cerita film pendek? Karena uh, dalam film pendek saya merasa bahwa ide-ide lebih bebas berlarian. Terutama uh, di negara kami di Indonesia yang uh, kita juga masih menerapkan uh, sistem sensor terhadap semua konten film maupun uh, konten uh, acara lainnya. Jadi buat saya sangat menarik sekali untuk uh, menonton film-film pendek baik buatan dari dalam negeri maupun dari luar negeri. Dan uh, karena itu tadi saya mengucapkan juga bahwa uh, film pendek jadi sesuatu yang lebih menarik karena bisa merangkum kebebasan berekspresi terutama juga dalam menyuarakan hati dan pendapat terhadap situasi sosial dan isu keberagaman yang selalu kami bawa di Festival Film 100% Manusia sejak 4 tahun yang lalu. Nah, sebelum kita memulai webinar malam ini, izinkan saya menjelaskan teknisnya. Jadi eh, harap para panelis untuk mematikan dulu kamera dan mikrofonnya pada saat tidak berbicara. Saya juga akan mengingatkan nanti apabila kamera dan mic Anda masih mati pada saat nanti giliran Anda berbicara. Lalu eh, harap diingat juga bahwa webinar hari ini akan direkam dan disiarkan secara langsung melalui eh, YouTube dan eh, para final eh, para panelis kok finalis maaf kemarin habis mengusung festival yang lain ada finalis <laughs> sekarang para panelis kepada para panelis eh, yang ingin berbicara eh, ya ini mendengarkan dalam bahasa Inggris bisa langsung menghidupkan fitur terjemahan di sebelah kanan ada fitur terjemahan dan bisa langsung mengaktifkan eh, opsi bahasa Inggrisnya sementara bila anda ingin Uh, mendengarkan dalam bahasa Indonesia, uh, Anda harus menekan opsi bahasa Korea. Nah, ini juga saya bingung kenapa harus pakai bahasa Korea, tapi ternyata begitu adanya. Jadi, Anyong Haseo uh, bisa langsung diterjemahkan, langsung pilih aja ke dalam bahasa Korea tadi. Uh, karena ini juga ada tips sebenarnya yang dikasih tahu sama uh, penerjemah kami, kadang Zoom tidak bisa, um, me, belum bisa, saya, saya lebih memilih kata-kata belum, untuk menerjemahkan dalam bahasa Indonesia. Jadi makanya dipilihlah bahasa Korea tadi. Lalu buat teman-teman uh, di Fabel, kami juga menyediakan uh, juru bahasa isyarat yang bisa dilihat dan agar kalian juga bisa ikutan berpartisipasi dalam acara 100% webinar Diversity Capture ini. Sebagai informasi tambahan, semua film yang dibahas dalam webinar ini masih dapat disaksikan dalam kompilasi 100% script shorts. Dan iya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Uh, sebelumnya saya juga mengucapkan selamat datang kepada para panelis kami yaitu Yudhistira Tegar Hermawan, sutradara dari film Nyalon. Ya, lalu ada Nicolas Oliveira, sutradara dari Kolombia dari film Atera. Terima kasih. Ada juga uh, produser dari film Those Who Love, jo Jorgen Lorentzen dari Norwegia. Dan kita juga ada sutradara dari film pendek Nikal dari Inggris, uh, Ye Wen Ho. Oke, terima kasih. Uh, sebelum kita memulai acara ini, izinkan saya mengucapkan terima kasih kepada para pendukung setia 100% Manusia Film Festival dari uh, sejak awal kami berdiri, yaitu ada dari Uni Eropa, ada Movies That Matter, lalu juga British Council, Cinemax, 
Tina first. Info screening. Kincil. Magdalene. Mokino. Display. StickyNote.com. Dan kita sam oh masih ada lagi sebelum menyambut ke sebentar masih ada lagi partner kami dari kedutaan besar Kanada Tine Europa Erasmus Huys kedutaan besar Prancis kedutaan besar Belanda kedutaan besar Swedia Institut Fransi Indonesi kekini ruang bersama Kemala Home Living Angsa Merah Klinik, Amnesty Internasional, Arus Pelangi, Kontras, LBH Jakarta, LBHM, YLBHI, Margin Kiri, Selatan, Trekstur, Integral Film, Emapil, dan Tumbuh. Sekarang mari kita sambut festival director dari 100% Manusia Film Festival Rain Cuaca. Silakan Rain. Ya, terima kasih. Um, selamat malam semuanya. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us yeah, in this webinar this evening. So tonight we are about to discuss how diversity, how diversity is captured in the short films screened in the 100% Manusia Film Festival in the 100% Screen Shorts compilation. Um, in general, we know how short films are great in communicating ideas. It has a slight different language than the feature films where it is more focused in presenting the ideas of the filmmaker, which is really great for an audience like me, who has a really, really short attention span. So um, these short films, uh, they are effective tools for reaching out and raising awareness for certain issues. And in our case, raising awareness on human rights and humanity issues. I am very grateful to our panelists tonight. Jorgen, Yi Wang, Nico, and Yudis uh, for being here and sharing their insights with us tonight. Also to our moderate, moderator Putri, thank you. And of course, our translators and um, sign language interpreters, thank you all. I hope we all can have a great discussion about the films tonight, whether it is about the issue or about the production. So let's have a great discussion, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rain. Yes, let's have a great discussion, guys. So uh, I think uh, enough of the small talks. Let's get to the business, guys. <laughs> This is what we are here for. Okay, uh, saya ngomong dalam bahasa Indonesia. Nanti kalau saya ngomong dalam bahasa Inggris, saya ditoyor sama uh, host saya, Pak Farhan, jadi bos saya malam ini, dan juga Ci Yudit. Oke, okay, uh, pertanyaan pertama akan saya ajukan kepada uh, sutradara dari Inggris, dari film Mikal. Tapi saya akan menanyakan ini dalam uh, bahasa Inggris. Semoga uh, tidak keberatan ya. <laughs> Hi, Yewang, you may uh, turn on your camera and also your uh, microphone. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Good to have you uh, with us tonight at this 100% webinar, Diversity Capture. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, yeah. we are very happy to have your film also in our festival. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, I definitely enjoy it as a, a part of the film programmer in the 100% Manusia Film Festival. Mm. So, yes. So what was the inspiration basically for uh, your film? Well, to start with, I mean, you know, I, I live with somebody who has dyslexia, but I thought I knew, you know, enough about dyslexia. But as we were looking for a topic to, to do a short film about, I, I, you know, I thought maybe because dyslexia has been in somewhat in the West, you know, they talk about it, but I thought that there was enough done already for dyslexia. But actually, as I researched more into the subject, I realized that actually not much has been done for people with dyslexia. You know, unless you, you have money or you, you, know, you have parents who knows where to seek help. And even then you have to have you know, the funds to help you along the way if you have dyslexia. And children who say come from a poorer background do not get any help. So I'm, I was very determined in the end that I need to make this film to create, again, awareness about dyslexia and not just about the awareness of dyslexia, but also about the lack of help that these people are getting, you know? So because knowing what it is and what we can do to help is another. Yes, it is actually it is actually quite interesting when we saw your film that we uh, did not fully realize that also dyslexia has uh, become a main issue even in UK. Here in Indonesia, not only dyslexia but also different ab other different ability or other disabled people, they do not have the same opportunity or uh, the equality to enter even a like a regular school and yes. uh, we don't have also facilities to accommodate them to to earn a, a decent education basically so that's why when we saw your film it was like oh wow that's even in another part of the world not only in Indonesia you guys face the same problem mm. I mean yeah you would think that in United Kingdom you know this this problem should have been looked into and that all schools to accommodate for children with this, as you can call it, this it's a slight disability, but it does disable the child because they can't learn properly at school. And once this, this failure to learn in schools, they will end up being, you know, very frustrated. And then they end up doing all the wrong things, you know, whether they, they end up joining you know, gangs or, you know, misbehave. All these things will become the, the result of not actually giving these kids, you know, the right kind of support and the right way of teaching them because they all can learn as, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I found out all these children with dyslexia can learn. You just have to find what level of dyslexia theirs is and also what kind of dyslexia. I mean, dyslexia is not just not being able to read. Um, you know, there are many forms of dyslexia and it really range quite a bit. Um, and so when we researched into this and when before I made the film, I was hoping to tell because the, the what is dyslexia? Because the question is, what is dyslexia? A lot of people would ask. And I asked the question because I just associated it with you know, the inability to read, almost like to do it words. But actually that is, yes, a main part, main part of it is about that. But there are many, you know, uh, ways why they can't read. The, the reason why they can't read may not be to not being able to uh, see the letters, mm. but sometimes it's to do with actually just not seeing it. You know, it's the, the way their brain is uh, wired, if you like. And so when I asked, when we, when we spoke to Pat Jones, who we did the, in the end, we did the, the short film based on her. She, she, she's an, ex, an expert on 
dyslexia. And so when I asked her, you know, the question, I said, look, I like to do a film, an awareness film, to make people understand about dyslexia. Is there something or, you know, is there something you can let me know that I can, you know, project what dyslexia is? And it was interesting because then she made it obvious that actually it's not so simple to say it is to do with reading. It's, it's a lot of things, you know, it's, it's just a start. Okay, it's an understanding that it is to do with reading, but how they, how they can teach the child to overcome the problem, it's not a straightforward one way suits all. It can be many, many ways to, to solve their, their problem. So in a way, when I made the film, I chose the, the one that all people kind of understood to be dyslexia about inability to read. That is to make the, you know, the understanding easy, but it's not all there is about dyslexia. But the main point I hope that people get is the, to see, to feel the frustration of the child and the parents, you know, when they don't get the help. Uh, and hopefully that should spur people on to do something about this, you know, because we, we, we think actually, because after all these years of people talking about dyslexia, you know, there would have been a lot of work to help these people, but actually from um, our research, we, this, uh, this help is not really forthcoming. All the kids, you know, that we go, when we go to, to these schools, uh, we find that children are not, you know, not picked up in their early age about dyslexia. And uh, if they are picked up by the teachers, you know, if they were trained, say, to, to kind of spot a child with dyslexia, it would be so easy to then quickly put them in the right kind of school or curriculum to let them overcome it. You know, once they overcome it, it's very funny because once a child is taught how to overcome that problem, everything falls into place. You know, it doesn't mean that they have to constantly like be taught, you know, differently. It's a way of them seeing things. And once they, they know how to overcome that problem, all the others, as they grow older, it, everything will fall into place, you see. So it's, it's catching them very, very early so that when, they, when they're young, once you've got them to know, oh, you don't read it like that, you, you have to look at it this way, and then they, everything else will be fine, you know? And, uh, and then, you know, throughout their educational his, uh, life, lifetime, they will be able to learn. So, so I, well, let's, let's hope that, I mean, you know, different governments will do more for these people. Yes, I think uh, it is it's quite interesting what you said that if you detect it very early and then you can trigger and how you can actually adapt, it is basically, it is the same, uh, not same, probably similar treatment to also what we do to other children. So be, instead of putting them into the boxes and uh, treating them differently, we just need to find another layer to, to treat some, to treat them with something that can motivate them and like what you said, to trigger and then also to to make them uh, just go directly into which direction that uh, they want to go with the dyslexia. Uh, also, uh, how is it ex ex uh, exactly with the education curriculum for the des uh, dyslexia kids in England? Um, it depends on the level of your dyslexia. The, the mm. very severe dyslexia, uh, children tend to go to specialist school. They have to okay. go which are, you know, only for these uh, dyslexic uh, children or children with uh, um, disability of kind of learning, learning difficulties. And when they, you know, those are only if you're very serious cases. Um, and they are private, most of these things. Very hard to get that through, you know, uh, governmental bodies and things like that. Uh, you, you really need to be to have the money to send your child to these private schools. Um, but if your dyslexia is kind of very moderate or not so severe, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, once they need maybe just one lesson a week just to start so that they understand how they can overcome their, their problem. You know, so it's a, it's a you know, th these children, are, they can fit into the normal school systems. It's just that they need special help maybe once or twice a week. It depends how, you know, it depends how it is, how much time they need to spend to get that extra help so that they will, they can follow the rest of the curriculum, you know, without any problems. Um, so it depends on the severity. Right, so, okay. So there's actually different classes and, and also different phase that they need to uh, adapt also. And, uh, you mentioned earlier that this is actually based on the, also your personal experience. Uh, so what is the most difficulty or the biggest challenge that you find so far in making the film? Well, I, I don't have dyslexia. It's just that I know people <laughs> dyslexia. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the problem of making the film at first was to really first and foremost, do I want to tell people what dyslexia is really because you know dyslexia is very broad as i said you know even the experts can can give it can give us the information in a very simple one paragraph or one liner you know it's not so easy so when as the challenge for me as a director to try to uh, you know pass on this awareness to people about dyslexia was at first I thought maybe, you know, okay, this, this information about dyslexia, you know, do I need to tell them so much? You know, it might be very confusing mm -hmm. because it is confusing uh, subject. So in the end, I kind of worked through it and I realized maybe the best way is to just go for the feel, the, the frustration to, to try to project the, the, the you know, the torture the little boy went through, you know, the frustration he felt and, um, and also for the mother. So, so that I hope the feeling of that, oh my God, you know, I, I hope that people, when they watch this, they say, oh, we have to help these people, you know, because it, it's so awful and it's, uh, and can cause so much distress to the family and to the child. So that in the end was my focal point, you know, to get that emotion, emotional connection with the audience. And indeed that actually delivered, uh, I mean, I basically said a tear watching the film. So <laughs> thank you for making this film. So thank yes, you. <laughs> Thank you, and uh, I think we will uh, continue with uh, the next filmmaker. And anyone who wants to ask uh, Yoen questions about the the her, his film Mika, you can also uh, put the questions at the Q and A button below. You can also put it in uh, Indonesian language, and I will help to translate uh, them to Yoen. Thank you, Yoen. Thank you. All right, next, uh, I would like to uh, call the filmmaker of uh, the Colombian uh, filmmaker, Mr. Nicolas Oliveira. Hello. Hello, Nico. How are you? Good. Very well. Thank you. Hi, good to see you. It's uh, so uh, Nico film Atera is actually uh, the pre premiered. It's actually premiered in 100% Manusia Film Festival. We are honored to have this uh, this film in the, in the festival. So uh, for the Atera itself, it's uh, it has very shocking scenes actually. It's not why we chose them, though. <laughs> not because of the shocking scenes, but also, be, but actually more into the issues that uh, portrayed in Atera itself. It uh, somehow it represents also the violence and how there there is also a kind of distrust and a violation in the human rights itself. Now, 
what makes me wonder us, uh, at this moment is uh, how is it with the condition of human rights uh, in Colombia and what was the inspiration? Because I remember uh, you, you mentioned uh, previously that it was, uh, you made this film a couple of years ago during something that is big happening in Colombia at that time. Uh, yes, I did. I didn't want to make the, the movie uh, exactly about Colombia situation, but it's pretty much inspired by, by what happened. Um, so yeah, in the in the year 2016, um, Colombia has had a war for 50 years with the guerrilla, and uh, it was about to finish. It is a, it, it was in a process of finish, and there was a referendum on peace to see if we wanted to continue the, the, the process of peace in Colombia in 2016. Uh, so there was a referendum and most people voted against it. And uh, that really surprised me, like who would prefer a war to peace? <laughs> in, in what conditions? So I, I started. I started, uh, sorry. Uh, I started thinking of, of, about it and um, the idea of the script came, came from that situation. Like I started investigating like why, uh, why this happened. And I would see like there would be like a lot of fake news, a lot of, of, of false information about the process. And that influenced a lot of the decision of a lot of people. So that made me think. And then I, I saw that was happening in other countries like misinformation from sources on uh, social media. It has happened probably in the United States, uh, probably here in Indonesia too, uh, in many countries. But in Colombia, uh, it, was, uh, it was related to that situation, to, to the peace process. And so I didn't want to make it exactly to, uh, to that, but there's a lot of influence of that because my short, it happens, uh, there's a war and they have to escape uh, an attack and they're, they're lost in the middle of the woods where they don't have like any information of what's happening and they have to go with what they know. And it's contradictory, like one thing is one thing, the other person knows, uh, knows, uh, yes. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Okay, yes. Uh, I think uh, some of our audience can't hear you quite well. Probably ah, there's. Okay. I hope. So. I hope. So. Yes. I hope that uh, now everyone can hear Nico. <laughs> okay. I'll try to So what's the I'll try to I'll try to <laughs> all right. All right. This is also a one a very independent filmmaker who also can do the sound by himself. So <laughs> so yes. Now uh that is interesting because you mentioned about the background of the story and then how it's it's basically a kind of your personal response on the situation in Colombia. But I was just also I can't help but wonder why. Did you choose a female journalist as the leading character in the movie? Is it because of the Me Too movement? But it doesn't even exist at that time, I think. No, but there's, there's, there's many things to say about that. One of, one of it is, uh, I think we should write roles for, for not just from our point of view, like I'm a male, 40 years old, but I think that we should write from uh, many points of view, right? So. Uh, this idea came when I saw something that I saw. I saw a cameraman working uh, with an interviewer on the street, and that was an idea. That that idea came came uh, from there. And also, I've been thinking since I started uh, writing. Uh, always, I would write first from my point of view. So I would write from the point of view of a of a male, you know, that is my age. But with Tab, I started to think, no, I need to open. The way I write and, and, and what I write about, so I have to try to put myself in the shoes of of, of other people, and it should be like that uh, for uh, for everyone. I think we don't think about it because it's when you start writing, you write from what you know, right? 
And I think a lot of these films, probably they don't think they were in superhero movies and all of them are male. For a long time in Marvel movies, there were just male, <laughs> male superheroes. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, try, I try to, to open it. And, and now it's something that, that, I, uh, that I include in the way I write. I want to write not just from uh, my perspective, but of perspective of other, other religions, uh, other, uh, and the, of other genders, all of that, right? And, and it's an effort you have to make. You have to think about it. Oh, why am I writing from my perspective? Why am I not writing from other perspectives? And that pushes you to learn about other cultures. If I want to uh, uh, write a character that is Muslim, I have to learn about uh, Muslims. So that pushes, I think, people who write um, that pushes them to uh, try to to learn about more, open themselves to more cultures, to, to more things to do. So this with the with the journalist, she being, I think it shouldn't be a problem or it's even be an issue that that we write for for female. Uh, the, and and I and I see that more and more there, there there's more uh, prime roles given to 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 females and 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 uh, and, and people of minorities. And I think I think that that's important to to include. Yes, I agree with you. And also how you portray the, the female characters is quite strong and she has her own independence and also has her own belief and she's ready to, to, to die and to fight for what, 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 her, what her belief is. So that's, that's, really quite, and, uh, that's really quite impressive. And also, yes, I agree with you that we need more of a, a female horror heroine not being a feminist, but <laughs> yes, we do need that in our film. So, so yeah, but then there's also, uh, in your film itself, there's also a, a soldier character that uh, plays a role. So I was just like, I was just wondering, uh, what is the function of the soldier in terms of uh, human rights uh, in application in Colombia itself? Uh, in the situation of Colombia, yeah. Uh... Soldiers, there's because there's there's been a war for for uh, more than 15 years. There's there's many situations, different situations with soldiers. Uh, for example, uh, young kids being recruited by the guerrilla since they're 14, they're they're in the army, and then they're left. They don't they don't know they, they didn't go to school. For example, they they uh, very young. They don't know what to do. They only uh, know about the army. Uh, sometimes pushed to do things that are not uh, that they wouldn't do that are not, not moral too from 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 each side so colombia is in a peace process uh, trying to reconciliate people from each side you know uh, that's that's what this peace process from 2016 is 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 reconciliating people from both sides soldiers uh, soldiers with, with with the families probably that suffer from 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 the war um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so, so in a conflict, they are also a victim of, of, of the conflict. They're not just the perpetrators. They are, they are perpetrators, but many times they're also victims of it, you know? So a little bit in a more fantastic way, that's what happens a little bit in the short. He's there, he's, he's escaping an attack and he finds the, the journalist. Um, uh, those things, uh, I think I put things that happen in Colombia and probably in other conflicts, but I, but I put them, uh, I, I put them more like in, in that, in this story, in one sing, singular story, things that, that happen more in a, in a larger scale, yeah? So for example, in Colombia, and I guess probably these problems are universal wherever there is conflict, right? Yes, <laughs> that's true. All right, thank you, Nico. And uh, that's uh, that's quite uh, <laughs> for me. It's like wow, yeah. So apparently, again, there's uh, quite similarity that we have here <laughs> as well. So that's why the film also resonates well here with our audience in Indonesia. Thank you for making such a great film. And now we are going to also uh, talk with salah uh, sat with okay. Saya harus men-switch kepala saya ke dalam bahasa Indonesia. <laughs> Karena uh, host saya, Farhan, mengingatkan agar saya nggak boleh jadi alay, nggak boleh dicampur-campur bahasanya dalam bahasa Inggris dan bahasa. 
Oke, okay, kita akan ngobrol bareng salah satu. Uh, sebenarnya malam ini harusnya kita ngobrol juga dengan sutradara uh, film pendek dari Indonesia, yaitu uh, Kairunisa. Hanya saja uh, Ilun, panggilan akrab saya kepada Kairunisa, uh, lagi sakit demam, jadi dia berhalangan hadir malam ini. Dan uh, Tapi kita masih ada Yudis. Hai Yudis, apa kabar? Ya, Yudhistira Hermawan ini adalah sutradara dari film pendek Nyalon yang juga termasuk salah satu film Halo. Indonesia yang terpilih di uh, kompilasi screenshot 100% Manusia Film Festival. Halo, halo, halo. apa kabar semuanya? Kabar baik. Oke, okay. uh, bagaimana? Kok suaranya agak bergema ya? Sorry. Sebentar. Ya, oke. Okay. Nah, uh, Yudis, aku mau tanya soal bagaimana sih ketika kamu memproduksi film nyalon ini sendiri? Aku dengar kamu uh, membuatnya pada saat uh, awal tahun ya, udah dari mulai di tahun ini ya. Nah, um, mungkin bisa diceritakan sedikit untuk proses produksinya seperti apa dan uh, juga kenapa memilih karakter transpuan dalam film Nyalon ini. Hmm, awalnya, sebenarnya kita produksi film Nyalon ini bukan di awal tahun, tapi di setelah PSBB jilid pertama dan kenapa enggak kenapa kita ngambil tokoh transpuan e, ceritanya gini tadinya tuh e, film ini awalnya kita mau ngebuat film ini e, tentang pandemi hanya tentang pandemi tentang pada pedagang yang e, terdampak pandemi tapi ketika waktu itu beberapa hari sebelum pitching sama teman-teman untuk membuat film ini sama tim, aku ngelihat uh, ada transpuan yang masih bekerja di jalan sebagai uh, musisi jalanan. Dan itu ngelihatnya kayak uh, dari situ baru terinspirasi kalau misalkan uh, aku pengen ngambil transpuan gitu. Nah di situ awalnya susah untuk pitching ke teman-teman. Uh, meyakinkan bahwa karakter transkuan ini harus uh, ada di film kita gitu uh, karena mereka masih punya stereotype uh, dan stigma negatif tentang uh, transgender dan uh, LGBT community tapi uh, berusaha untuk meyakinin dan akhirnya uh, kita uh, produksi Uh, dan kenapa sebenarnya kalau dari saya kenapa transpuan karena di masa pandemi bahkan sebelum pandemi transpuan itu kan kita nggak nggak apa transpuan itu kan masih belum bisa punya akses uh, ke pekerjaan yang uh, aman gitu karena kalau misalkan, kalau misalkan kita lihat transpuan itu pasti di otak kita kalau seorang transpuan kerjanya kalau nggak jadi pekerja seks komersil, jadi uh, pekerja salon, atau kalau misalkan ada di TV pun itu hanya menjadi bahan olok-olokan, ya kan? Nah, uh, waria belum mempunyai uh, akses yang setara dengan uh, yang sama seperti kita gitu, seperti orang-orang kebanyakan. Nah, di sini. Hmm, mau melihat dan karena itu ketika pandemi mereka yang kalau misalkan kita orang kantoran kita pasti bisa WFA uh, tapi mereka nggak bisa mereka transpuan yang terdampak yang masih bekerja di jalan bekerja di salon itu mereka nggak bisa uh, apa me- 
me, apa namanya ngakalin ngakalin supaya mereka tetap bisa punya pemasukan akhirnya nah, udah mau nggak mau mereka ada yang e, nekat untuk tetap ngamen walaupun pandemi itu kan bahaya banget gitu kan nah tapi orang-orang nggak apa namanya e, orang-orang nggak peduli dengan si transport ini nah dari situ e, yaudah di akhirnya aku e, berusaha untuk memperkenalkan transpuan dari uh, sisi yang tidak terlihat gitu. Kalau di film nyawang ini kan kita ngambilnya transpuan uh, yang menjadi penengah di antara uh, dua di antara uh, di, di, penengah di dalam konflik itu kan. Berarti orang yang bisa mengambil konklusi di tengah pandemi ini gitu. Kalau misalkan biasanya Nah, kita tahu ya stigma yang ada perempuan eh perempuan maaf transpuan itu uh, cuma hanya jadi bahan olok-olokan tapi di sini mau ngasih ngelihat bahwa transpuan uh, juga bisa uh, mengambil kesimpulan yang bijak oke okay. jadi tadi kita uh, sempat ngobrol kamu juga sempat membicarakan mengenai stereotype tertentu dari transpuan di mana ada stereotip stereotip yang membuat uh, transpuan tidak bisa menerima uh, kesempatan yang sama dalam mencari pekerjaan sehingga uh, mereka kebanyakan bekerja seperti yang tadi kamu bilang bekerja di jalan atau bekerja di uh, salon kecantikan uh, atau uh, hal-hal yang serupa seperti itu nah Uh, buat kamu sendiri, uh, apakah stereotipe-stereotipe ini uh, sejauh ini dari yang kamu lihat sudah berhasil uh, dipatahkan atau justru mungkin ada faktor lain yang uh, membuat uh, transpuan sendiri uh, agak memiliki keterbatasan dalam bergerak? Kalau... Kalau kalau misalkan stigma yang terpatahkan atau belum menurutku belum ya uh, masih banyak uh, bahkan <tuh> di angkatanku uh, aku uh, 21 tahun <tuh> dan apa namanya dan seharusnya kan di angkatan aku uh, di anak-anak muda sosial aku uh, sudah bisa menerima ya karena seharusnya tapi di kalangan anak muda aku tuh di kalangan angkatan aku tuh masih nggak apa masih banyak yang salah paham tentang uh, transpuan mereka masih menganggap transpuan uh, itu sesuatu yang uh, apa sih kalau mereka bilang tuh uh, azab Tuhan apalah segala macam penyebab uh, bencana alam <laughs> dan apa uh, dan secara takaran kayak gitu mungkin yang sa- yang tadinya seharusnya bisa gampang dipatahkan di usia kita tuh eh di, di angkatan aku tuh di kalangan aku sekarang tuh nggak tahu kenapa makin susah dan menurutku uh, anak muda itu anak muda itu Kok jadi ini <laughs> jadi intinya adalah anak muda <laughs> entar sudah aku ngetik dengerin lo kak <laughs> tarik nafas dulu <laughs> santai aja uh, <laughs> kita uh, <laughs> coba ya nah sebenarnya aku mau ngomong uh, di kalangan kita di anak muda kalangan aku uh, ada yang udah ngerti ten, uh, terhadap apa ini transpuan dan isu transpuan ada yang nggak ngerti ada yang masih belum ngerti nah yang ngerti ini mereka cenderung diem dan yang nggak ngerti itu malah banyak noisinya banyak apa makin bersuara gitu nah mungkin itu yang salah satu kenapa kita kok susah banget mematahkan stigma yang ada di masyarakat gitu. Nah, bagaimana caranya? Caranya dengan 
uh, menurutku caranya dengan yang tadinya diem ini ayo kita uh, coba uh, sering-sering diskusi tentang masalah transpuan bahkan masalah LGBT uh, di tempat-tempat umum gitu nggak pak walaupun mungkin ada peraturan yang bilang nggak boleh tapi ya coba aja nggak apa-apa gitu <laughs> untuk di atau di kalangan pertemanan gitu nah ini sebenarnya film nyalon itu uh, salah satu uh, cara saya untuk me- memulai bukan memulai sih untuk me- bahas masa-masa transpuan gitu sih kak oke okay, Yudis uh, terima kasih atas penjelasannya nanti kita ngobrol lagi nanti kalau ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan dari teman-teman kepada Yudis dan juga uh, film nyalon silakan bisa langsung di Uh, tuliskan di kolom Q&A di bawah bisa juga dalam bahasa Indonesia ataupun dalam bahasa Inggris nanti saya kalau dalam bahasa Indonesia buat para panelis uh, dari negara lain saya akan bantu untuk terjemahkan terima kasih Yudis and now uh, we are going to talk with the producer of those who love Jorgen Lorenzen Initially, uh, we would like to have uh, Nefise Oscar Lorenzen to join us, but unfortunately, she has uh, other prior appointment, and we are so lucky that Jorgen, as the producer of Those Who Love, can also attend uh, the webinar tonight. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Can you see me uh, and hear me? Yes, I can see and hear you very well. Okay, that's good. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, you're going to good to see you. It's very bright in your window in Norway. No, no, no. I have a lot of lights <laughs> on around me here so they can see me because it's already dark. Ah, uh, okay. You no, know, in Norway in the winter time it is only four or five hours of light and then uh, so dark uh, comes early. Right, and then it's, it's it's already snowing, I guess. It's already a little bit snowing this morning, yeah. Yes, wow. <laughs> we look forward to more of it. Really? Wow. <laughs> All right. But thank you for joining us. In the, and yes, uh, it is unfortunately that uh, Nafise can join, but we are happy to have you here to thank talk you. also about those who love. This uh, movie uh, particularly uh, interests us as uh, our uh, film programmer, and especially where it's located in the elevator. This is basically my first question. Why did you and Nafisa choose Elevator? Yeah, you know, um, the thing is that when we started making the film, we were originally asked by an organization if we could make a film about domestic violence or uh, violence in intimate relationships. And, you know, when you are as a creative team, uh, are being asked about such a huge question and with no limits, it's totally open. Uh, it's a lot of discussions you have to go through. How, to, how will you make the film? First, are we going to make a documentary about uh, violence against women? But then we thought, no, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of films out there actually about violence against men, women. Let's, let's make um, uh, a drama, a, a, a drama fiction uh, short film. In a, in a few minutes and how can we concentrate such a huge question you know mm. like uh, violence in intimate relationship into five minutes it's uh, it's not that easy and and of course we wanted to have a broader view on it uh, most people today they know about violence against uh, men's violence against women it's an uh, international global we can almost say pandemic Uh, in these days, you know, it's uh, all, it's all over. Every country, thousands of women are dying from violence every year, and so on. But uh, we wanted to have a focus as a little bit broader, showing that yeah, we have men's violence against women, that's for sure. But we also have men's violence against men in gay relationship. Yes, we have uh, women's violence against men. Uh, also in a heterosexual relationship and we have women's violence against women and we have uh, of course also sexual violence against children so we wanted to sort of try to put several of these uh, versions into one little film 
And then we decided, so the first thing was a drama. We wanted to not only talk about uh, violence against women, but also mm -hmm. other type of violence in intimate relationship. And then the second point of us, for us was that we wanted to talk about uh, the shame people feel, the secrets we all carry around. And for example, when we talk about uh, incest or, or, or violence against children, we know that it often can take more than 15 years before these young people are talking about it to anybody. So it's a, it's a secret you carry with you for a long, long time in your life. Many people are, are, uh, are waiting longer than that, you know, before they start talking about it. So we wanted to sort of show this uh, uh, in a filmatic way, these secrets that we all have, these uh, this taboos we are carrying, the shame we are carrying with us, because it's not a thing we just go out and talk about. And that is when we decided to, to uh, have this black box, you know, because the image of the black box is, uh, of course, from airplanes. Mm -hmm. we, we are all searching if an airplane is crashing, we're all searching for the black box, because what is in the black box? Yes, it's a tr truth about everything. You know, the truth is there. So we have this black box that we're, we're carrying around with the truth in it, you know, and, uh, and at the same time, so then we have to find a location. So what is... How can we do this in such a four or five minutes way? You know, how can you tell these stories into one, uh, uh, one you know, connected story? And that's when we de decided to make, yeah, let's put it in an elevator and make a house of violence. Where we have several floors where you can go and talk about violence. You have physical violence, uh, first floor, uh, psychological violence, second floor, you know, and then uh, you have sexual violence and then you have incest and, you know, so we have different, you have a house where we can go and we can speak about these different types of violence. And then we decided if you put all the characters into one elevator, it's very concentrated. It's very, it's very compact. Uh, we have them there with their, with their stories together. And are they, are they ready to to go out, you know, this is the thing. Are, are you ready to, to go out and start talking about it or are you not? You know, and if you see that we are coming to this first floor uh, with a story about uh, physical violence and, and she's not yet ready to go out and start opening up her black box. She's closing her black box and there we are, yeah. you know? So it's, um, so it's also a question about, we have to start talking about it. Yes, we have to I... leave the elevator in Askans, you know, we are, we are standing in the elevator for years in our lives, we have to leave it, we have to get out there, we have to take it out. This is, this, this is the elevator symbolizing, you can say. Yeah, and I think that's uh, worked pretty well and very effective in creating also a kind of intensity yes. and a thrilling moment. I mean, and also a little bit of claustrophobic, which probably everyone could feel. And also, this is basically why we choose this film, because it resonates well with the situation at this moment with, as you mentioned, in the, in the pandemic, the domestic violence. Uh, is the number arises up and then also not only in heterosexual relationship but also as you mentioned uh, in, in LGBT relationship and also in parents and in any kind of relationship and it is also uh, the interesting part of having layers of floors like you mentioned yeah. like in a house of and when they holding also this black box which is I think all of us can resonate. We are, and yeah. it is, and also to admit that we are holding this hold back is also okay. Yeah. Uh, that is why you, uh, not to be a spoiler, probably maybe someone <laughs> <laughs> already haven't it's, watched the it's film. It's not yet. a very long film. It's not a very long <laughs> film. <laughs> but this is this is this is what I like about your film actually, because in a very short time you get everything delivered, and it's. Thank it's you. really, it's very yeah. intensified the feeling and you can't help but grabbing a tissue at the end of the, <laughs> it's true. Of, it's true. of the film, yes. Yeah. And, and how did you, uh, how long is the process and for the film itself and how did you choose all the characters? Because I can see also like you try to represent all kind of uh, human yeah. in the elevator. Yes, you know, this is, 
the the philosophy of uh, our company, you know, film company, it's uh, to work with variety uh, of uh, gender, sexuality, and also with ethnicity and religions. You know, this is this is sort of the first thing we are we are working on. And in this film, the the characters was the first thing we had. Uh, so the most difficult thing was actually to find an elevator. <laughs> So we searched for a long time around in Oslo to see if we can find an elevator that we could use for, for a whole day. You know, you, elevators are used all the time. How can we find an elevator that they can give us for one day? And uh, which also could be fit for uh, how we wanted it, you know, to, uh, to have this claustrophobic feeling. It had to be closed off, not a lot of glasses or windows or things like that. So we, had the, we needed a sort of a, this claustrophobic feeling, as you say, in it. And uh, but when we found the elevator, then uh, rest of it was uh, was uh, quite easy actually. And of course, uh, we have a lot of people we have been working with, and a lot of people we know, uh, actors from different cultures, different backgrounds, that we can choose if we want to when we're making a film like this. And it's so important, you know, uh, especially this is an important issue in uh, in uh, in, the, in Europe, in in Norway where we have a main population is white like me, you know, but uh, we have all these other uh, people present here and we have to show this variety all the time when we are working in, in film, that's our obligation. Yes, and I was, now I'm surprised that to know that it's actually a real elevator. I thought that it was just like in a studio. No, no. <laughs> we, we tried to see if we can make it, but we wanted to no, know it's a real elevator. Wow. So it's a real elevator. Yes. And then but the also, house, I mean, the house of violence is not real. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually my but, next question. Yeah. But perhaps we need it all over, you know, uh, a safe place where everybody, we can go and open our black boxes and, and talk about the abuses that we have experienced in our lives. Yes, that's true. And then also, uh, there was also like a kind of aspect that uh, I see you want also to touch every, like you mentioned earlier that you want to put all the kind of issues there, not only the abusive uh, form of physical, but also mentality with the mother yeah. and then also. It's, uh, I think just... that's important because when we, when we do interviews with people, when you have, when you, if you look at uh, uh, surveys and studies all over the world, you can see that the, the huge, the, the biggest amount of violence is psychological violence. And also most people are actually talking about the psychological violence in a way as worse than the physical violence. Sometimes, I mean, if someone hit you, you can defend yourself or you can leave it. You can say, I don't want this, but the psychological violence is very difficult to handle. How can you confront it? Uh, how can we talk about it? And uh, because it's it's uh, almost uh, it's it's making a bagatelle out of it, you know. So it's uh, it's hard to to to. So, but pe people are saying that the psychological violence makes them feel like they're losing their self, you know. They they're losing the idea of being a a grown up, fully grown up person. So we had to also confront. But psychological violence is sometimes very subtle. So mm -hmm. how can you show subtleness? In film, it can be difficult, and we find a situation here that we find, we think, sort of caught the idea of the of how psychological violence yes. function. You take right. away the value of other people. Yes, and how is it actually with the psychological violence and also the mental health uh, treatment in uh, Norway? Uh, I think it is uh, better than many other places. Uh, we have, uh, first of all, we have a very well developed structure of crisis center uh, and the crisis center here, it's open for both men and women uh, and they are all over in the country. So uh, all the regions have their crisis center and it's a lot, people can go there, they're open for everybody, young and old uh, and so on. And also we have uh, family crisis centers uh, or more psychological or therapeutic help for families in, in uh, also having difficulties where you can go without costs, you know, to, to talk for a couple of hours. So uh, it is available. Um, the thing is that we need to tell people that uh, this is something you have to go and talk about.
True. Here in Indonesia, we have that kind of challenges to uh, convince or motivate people to be more open with this kind of issue. Yeah. And, and also, we, don't, we, we rarely have a kind of crisis center. That's why within the festival itself, we provide a, a session where people can do a kind of a yeah. venting session in 100% heart to heart. So that's actually started also at the same time, the film, your film is being screened this afternoon. So this is really interesting to Wonderful have your idea. film. Thank yes. you. I really hope it will be used because this is what I think it's, uh, it's a film that can perhaps trigger people to, mm. to go out and talk about it. Because as you say, it's a huge problem in, uh, in many, many countries. And for me as a feminist, uh, I'm of course very occupied with uh, giving the consciousness to men to start uh, dealing with it. Because yes. even though you have found violence in many different relationships, it's basically still mostly men that is the perpetrator of violence. So we have to focus on men and, and start uh, asking men to change. I agree with you, especially here <laughs> in Indonesia. <laughs> I know. Okay, Jorgen, yeah, Jorgen, thank you so much. And uh, now thank we you. will go to the questions from the audience. And I would like to also remind you guys that we have a free giveaways for everyone who has gave the best questions for tonight for the 100% webinar tonight in diversity captured. And you can also, oh, Sorry, why am I speaking in English? Oh yeah, jadi semuanya bisa uh, bertanya di tombol uh, di fitur pertanyaan Q&A di bawah uh, di bawah. Jadi kalian bisa menanyakan segala macam pertanyaan bisa dalam bahasa Indonesia dan bisa juga dalam bahasa uh, Inggris. Nanti kami akan ada ada giveaway juga buat para penanya terbaik. Uh, malam ini jadi silakan di, menanyakan di, di kolom tersebut di button tersebut uh, ntar saya mau bertanya dulu kepada host apakah uh, para panelis harus membuka kameranya sekarang oke okay, ya yeah. saya, uh, saya mohon agar para panelis bisa membuka kameranya for this Q&A session I would like to ask the panelists to open the, their camera but still mute their uh, Your microphone. Thank you, Yawen. And uh, we are still waiting for. Thank you, Nico. And you this. Great. Thank you, you this. All right. Um, now the first questions. So, uh, yes. Well. Both questions are in Indonesian language, so I will translate to you guys. Wow, it's, uh, I'm very appreciative for all of the panelists who already wants to voice uh, the importance of other community in their film. Uh, and, I'm, and thank you for uh, 100% Manusia. The discussions is really helpful, and I'm very happy to hear that. All right, so mm, there's no questions in <laughs> here. So just an appreciation. Thank you for the anonymous attendee for giving this. It's really, really an, a good uh, comment for all of us here. Okay, now it's from uh, Siti Fadila. I would like to ask, oh, saya mau tanya ke, okay. Saya mau tanya, so she, Siti Fadila has like a, Sorry, Siti Fadila has like uh, three questions. First is actually to you, Distira, how people respond to your film. And then also uh, basically also to all of you, how the, uh, to how the people respond to your film, Those Who Love, Jorgen, and also to uh, the film of Mikal and uh, Atera as well. So probably we could start with you this first. Hai, makasih Siti Fadila udah nanya uh, untuk film nyalon respon orang-orang sih 
sejauh ini semuanya ketawa ya <laughs> karena uh, genre itu komedi uh, terus uh, emang sebenarnya kenapa komedi karena pada akhirnya aku ngambil keputusan untuk uh, memilih ini menjadi komedi ini kan diputar uh, ini ditayangkan di saat pandemi terus kayak pengen uh, menghibur orang di tengah-tengah pandemi ini itu aja sih dan alhamdulillahnya rata-rata orang yang lihat sih ketawa oke okay, thank you Yudis and uh, probably we could also start with Yewen now how how is the response for uh, the film Mikal that you received so far Well, so far, it's been very positive. I mean, we've had very good response uh, in the comments that we've got from YouTube because the film is also, we have actually put it on YouTube. Uh, and uh, we are, I think this time today, five, oh, is it five almost 500,000 views uh, of the film. So it's considerable, the number. And um, and the comments we've been getting on YouTube have uh, been very, very positive. And I'm glad that it's finding an audience. I mean, it's growing organically on YouTube, which is um, very good because that's the whole point. We want people to see it, feel it, be aware, and hopefully we can do some changes in this, in this world. Thank you, Yuen. And then Nico. I know this is actually a premiere of your film. Uh, yeah. How do you, maybe there's some people already response? Uh, the only people who have seen it uh, are the team. So this is the first time the Indonesians are the first one to see it, probably in a context that is very different, but it's interesting to see like away from the context of Colombia, how it is received. And I'm hoping that I get a response, see how, see how it is perceived here, it probably is perceived in a very different way here, or, or maybe not, maybe there's some similarities that can be drawn up the film. So I'm, I'm hoping to get those answers here. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. And Jorgen, uh, how, how did the people respond to those who love? Um, one, uh, one reaction we have got is very, very interesting because uh, several people have written to us uh, or contacted us afterwards and thanking us for this wonderful documentary. Uh, and uh, I find that uh, really interesting that uh, it is so well made <laughs> that people think it is a documentary, you know. So, uh, but it's in a way it's true, you know, it can easily be seen as a documentary because these are the stories we are all carrying with us. So people are immediately going straight into these different stories and uh, ident identifying with them. Yeah. And uh, outside of that, I think the two metaphors we are using with the elevator and the black box is also going very quickly into the emotions of people. So we can see that people start crying, you know, as you, as you said, that they start crying after four minutes, you know, and that's, uh, that's an amazing effect film can have. And, uh, and that, that is also, of course, giving us uh, uh, satisfaction in a way. We are very, very deep, grateful for that because then we see that people react uh, to the stories we are telling in, in a way we want them to react because we want, of course, people to go out there and start talking. This is the most important thing. Yes, that's true. That's basically why we choose all the five films here, because it creates such a turmoil of emotions by watching all of the films that you guys have made. And, uh, and this is why actually uh, we are having this uh, webinar, because you guys managed to capture all these kind of issues of diversities, even in a different kind of the world. And, in any kind of layers, this is something that's wonderful. And yes, probably in four minutes, you can basically grab the tissues or, or laugh with the uh, Yudhistira also uh, <laughs> funny story about uh, the trans uh, women. And now, uh, but also Siti Fadila still asks the same question to all of you guys. Uh, is there any people who against Like maybe you receive some kind of negative feedback from the people who has already watched it. Maybe uh, I can answer first because it's quite easy yes. because uh, I cannot think about any negative reactions we have got actually. 
um, we were perhaps expecting that someone would react that we are not basically or or singularly focused on violence against women because when we say violence in intimate relationships, everybody is thinking about violence against women. You know, that's the that's the sort of the main question. But uh, no one has uh, discussed it or taken that as a as a in a in a defensive matter that we are also here focusing on other type of violence in intimate relationships. So we are very happy for that. Thank you. Thank you, Jorgen. How, how about you, Jorgen? Is there any uh, negative feedback you receive or maybe some kind of input that could be useful for your next project? Um, you know, as, a, as the, I think the topic itself, I think everybody was relating very positively to the whole thing. You know, if there were any criticism, I think they will criticize maybe, well, maybe the direction or maybe on the, you know, technical side of things, but and we, we didn't get many of that. You know, you may get the occasional people who might say, oh, I don't like that music or something like that, but it's not to do the issue. I think most of the time, uh, every comment that we've had, they have been really very, very positive. And, um, you know, maybe you get the occasional people who, who think that, oh, I don't like that music, but that, you know, but those things, you can't please everyone, you know, on the actual making of a film. You know, there are so many things you can, you open yourself up for criticism for, for the filmmaking. But in terms of the issue, and uh, I think most of the things that have come back, you know, we've been very, very happy with the response. Yes, oh, that's good. And then, yes, I agree with you, actually, we cannot please everyone, but it is still a drive for us to create good films and to still voice us our uh, issues to our films actually. So yes, and then also for uh, Nico. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still muted, Nico, sorry. Oh, sorry. So no, not yet, no, no positive and no negative. So we're safe for the moment. We need to hear from Indonesians now, see what they think about it. Open for both. I think we, we learn from both. I think it's an opportunity to listen. These festivals are an opportunity to listen from the audience too. So this is an opportunity for us to learn also like how we are perceived because a, a little bit filmmaking is a, a discussion with the, with the public. So with the audience. So I hope to hear from, from, from people. Yeah. Yes, this is actually a good opportunity for everyone also to let Nico know. Nico is available on his Instagram and also at, at Terra Film Instagram so that you guys can actually also uh, directly send your feedback to him. Be it a negative or a positive one, that would be uh, great to yeah. listen to. Nah, uh, yeah, yes, sekarang untuk Yudis, bagaimana Yudis? Ada selama ini karena filmmu sudah pernah diputar sebelumnya di uh, acara yang lain ya dan apakah sudah ada uh, mungkin respon dari orang-orang, terutama juga isunya yang mengangkat isu transpuan. Sebenarnya, uh, sebenarnya ini semua sudah dipikirin dari awal. Ketika mau kita, ketika kita mau mengangkat uh, isu trans, mengangkat isu transpuan. Uh, awalnya pikir kalau misalkan di Indonesia uh, transpuan itu masih dianggap sesuatu yang tabu. Nah makanya itu uh, ketika kita memilih genre film apa yang mau kita bawakan uh, itu kita pada akhirnya kita memilih komedi karena itu uh, genre yang aman untuk uh, kita memperkenalkan isu perempuan ke masyarakat itu sih jadi semuanya bisa uh, tertawat tanpa ada rasa rasa apa namanya no offense gitu, no gitu loh jadi tanpa Just. ada rasa dikuliahin uh, gitu ya iya iya, iya benar 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 gitu maksudnya gitu. sejauh ini sih belum ada gitu sejauh ini sih belum ada belum ada Semoga nggak ada ya, semoga semua pendapatnya uh, semakin mendukung dan positif. Oke, okay. uh, sekarang kita uh, lanjut ke, sorry, 
Karena kita lanjut ke pertanyaan selanjutnya. Ini ada pertanyaan untuk uh, Nico. Uh, you mentioned that your film was inspired by events in Colombia a few years ago. But uh, watching it today, there seems to be a lot of parallel messages to current events. Can you share how you see the relevance of the film to today's current event? Um, yes, I think it's relevant for, uh, for many situations in, in many countries where information is difficult to know what is fake news, what is not, and how they influence the public. I think in my, in my short movie, it's about, it's about a conflict but it's been happening uh, everywhere uh, in many ways. I think in many countries, probably the other panelists can talk to how it happens in their own countries. But um, for example, uh, you know, like people in the US now, they, there are people who don't believe that uh, coronavirus exists even as, they, as they're dying because, and, uh, and they're affected by it and, and, and they don't believe it. So they, there's a parallel in, in, in my short movie where At the, at the end, she's suffering very much and she still believes something that probably is true or not. We don't know because sources of information are, uh, it's, it's become a, a problem. What is, what is true and, and, and what isn't, right? What to believe, social media. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think it is relevant in, 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 in any country uh, right now in very many, in many, many different ways. It can be elect, country elections, could be could be wars, could be a pandemic. Uh, so social media and fake news and what is not true tend to influence uh, negatively uh, more and more, I think, around the world. Thank you, Nico. Yes, I think that's also answer. And this is why actually why Nico Films Atera is also being selected in the festival because it is also resonate with the issues here. And um, also, basically, all of the films that selected at the screenshots compilation of 100% Manusia Film Festival has been chosen because it also shows great courage in each of the characters of the, the portrayed in the film itself. Now, uh, there's also another uh, question from uh, Jaya. Was, uh, to all of you guys, uh, do you, how big is it actually an impact of making a short film? Does it actually give a kind of enlightenment to the movement of uh, the minorities? And uh, which one that can actually uh, give more effect? A feature length film or a short film? Maybe Yoen, you can start first. Well, I think uh, as a you know, director did say, I mean, the people today, the young people especially, um, they are, Yeah, attention span is quite short. So maybe maybe a short film these days might do better in getting people's attention. But obviously features, you know, has a different way. I mean, you, you'd be looking at, if you're looking at it technically as a film, maybe to, to make the point much more rounded, more balanced view, you might need a much longer film to give that, That, that diversity of views, or maybe, you know, to look into that, that, that um, topic much deeper, if you like, uh, then you might need a feature. But I think if your point is quite, um, in a way, kind of straightforward, not too, you know, because sometimes most of films, they may, short films, I find, tend to leave you much more questions, if you like, they are to, for, you know, for more questions to come out of it, rather than just giving you answers. I think it's about getting more questions should come out of watching a short film, let's say. So maybe depending on what you're trying to achieve and how you, how you approach it, you will get the different response. Um, I think each, each thing has its own merit, you know, whether it's a feature or whether it's a short. So it's down to how you want to approach it and maybe also down to what the message is about and how you want it to be perceived. Thank you, Yoen. And uh, what did what you, Jorgen? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with uh, Jevan uh, to a large degree here. Um, it is two very, very different formats and uh, needs uh, to, um, yeah, it's two different ways of telling the story in a way. So um, it's, it's hard to com compare in a way. But when it comes to reaching out, of course, uh, a five minutes film, uh, also as you even said, it's easier perhaps to put out there and you can, you can uh, on all kind of social media, you can put it, you can screen it. It's, uh, you can use it as a small film uh, before uh, the, the feature films in, in cinema. Uh, you have a lot of possibilities to, to use it. You can use it in seminars and in conferences. Uh, so, so in that way, it is. It's. I think it's for the for the. If you look at the possibility to use it, it's easier to use a short film. But I just want to say two things also because it's important here to to remember that making a short film can be very very difficult. And I'm I'm not seeing too many really good short films. I have to say, uh, because we have to reflect and use a lot of time on on how to tell a story in such a short time and uh, I came to remember the very 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 famous words of, of Churchill when he's saying that you know if I'm going to speak in 30 minutes I don't need really to prepare my speech if I'm speaking for 50 minutes then I need some time but if I'm going to speak for five minutes then I really need a lot of time to prepare my speech and I think that's it's also how it can work with short films. That if you if you're going to make a short film, you have to you have to be working very hard with a manuscript, uh, with ideas, uh, and discuss it and work on it for a long time before you start uh, shooting it. So we are very sure that you are telling the story you want to tell within these few minutes. And I agree that uh, it's an easier way to to raise the questions, you know. You can raise the questions, you can get it out, and you can get people to start discussing it and giving their answers. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Jürgen. I think that's also a good tip for everyone who wants to be also a filmmaker to make their short films. And then, yes, uh, Yudis, bagaimana pendapat kamu? Mana yang lebih kira-kira uh, Lebih, eh, lebih besar mana impact-nya nih, yang film pendek atau film panjang? Mungkin karena kamu belum bikin film panjang, kira-kira dari film pendek yeah, sendiri yeah, gimana yeah. impact-nya? Uh, kalau untuk film pendek sendiri, tadi benar kata Yojen dan Tok dan Yuang. Uh, tapi kalau di Indonesia, tadi kata Mbak Putri di awal bilang, uh, untuk uh, membuat film dan uh, dengan isu yang sensitif itu lebih... Uh, gampang film pendek karena untuk film panjang distribusinya ada dalam uh, masih dalam uh, ruang lingkup sensor, lembaga sensor jadi kalau misalkan untuk uh, uh, bisa itu jadi pergerakan uh, itu lebih gampang lewat film pendek dan kita juga bisa lebih berkreasi lebih bisa ber, uh, bermain di film pendek dibandingkan di film panjang Oke, okay, Yudis, terima kasih. Dan uh, sekarang kepada Nico. Eh, sorry, now it's to Nico. <laughs> yes, which one? Which one is more uh, impactful, Nico? Mm, they both be, can be very. Both can be very impactful. I, I agree with the other. Part. I agree with the other panelists a lot. Um, um, also, I think when you have short movies that are made into uh, full-length movies. Sometimes the the result is not it's, it's not appropriate because it feels like it's been stretched out. It, it's it's two different mediums. They have to I think they have to be approached in different ways. And uh, but it's a way. And I think it's uh, personally I think it's sometimes a mistake. Sometimes people write a short movie to make to have it made into a, a because it's less money or it's they, it's considered easier, but 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 not necessarily. Uh, but for sure you need less money and then they from that short movie they want to make a, a longer movie and many times it's not unless it's, there's a lot of work in the rewriting uh, when you try to translate it to a, a, a long movie there's it's very difficult I don't know if you noticed that but I think I think it have to be approached as different mediums yeah especially when you're writing it okay thank you Nico. can I add one point yes please Jorgen 
uh, because this is uh, we are because we have just finished now a, a feature film. So one thing which is wonderful with uh, with a short film is that uh, the time you spend from the day you shoot, you, you man usually you, you shoot the film only in one day. You know when you do a short film, you can do one or perhaps two days. So the time from you shoot the film till you have a finished film <laughs> is wonderfully short. You know, it's uh, the shooting is quick, the editing is quick, and the post production is quite quick too. So you can have a film quite rapidly after you have <laughs> shot it, and that's for me now working for years with a full feature film. That's a that's a good part of it, you know. And of course, as uh, Nicolas says, it's uh, it needs less money to do it, uh, and it can be and it can be quite fun, you know, to work with short films. True. Yes, this is why actually I personally encourage everyone in Indonesia to make short film first because here where censorship is playing a very huge uh, role, uh, the short film like what you just mentioned before can actually roam around everywhere and it can actually tell us a lot of different uh, variety of the issues without being uh, afraid of being censored actually. And now we have actually uh, our last questions. Uh, how long does it take uh, for each of the filmmaker to do a research on the issues that portrayed? And uh, as you mentioned, Jorgen, also that uh, it's easier to find funding actually for short films. So probably you, all, all the four of you can actually give a kind of tips for the young filmmaker that joined us tonight and also for the press that joined us tonight. Uh, how do you find the, the funding to to enable your project in, the, make, in the making a short film. Probably, uh, Yoweng, you can start. <laughs> oh, funding is always a problem, isn't it? <laughs> Everywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, you know, well, in my case, it was slightly, how do you say? Because maybe, you know, because I haven't made that many films and, uh, um, and I, I was very lucky with the funding because especially the second film, which is Michael, I, when we approached uh, Pat and Mike Jones about turning the, you know, the emphasis on them, basically, to tell their story in a way. So, you know, so they, they too were very keen to see this project being done. So they also put money into it. Uh, so in the same case, I think if, if, um, if you are doing say an idea, your idea involves a certain group of people, or maybe, you know, there must be organizations out there that maybe who, you know, who, who are championing, you know, a certain cause, say, you know, in my case it was dyslexia, but you, you know, there will be other organizations that will touch upon issues that you want to talk about and you want to do. And I think these organizations, some of them will have some you know, funding that they can help with. So I think as long as if you approach the, the people that will find, you know, they will feel for your project, I think they will be the ones most keen to, to back you or to fund you. Uh, whereas if you just approach, say, a big international company, yes, they may have the money, but to them, it, it makes, you know, it doesn't resonate with them. And so they may not put any money with you. So I, I suppose the main thing is to approach organizations or individuals who have the same motivation in a way. So they are the, the easiest people to convince to part with a bit of money. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, that's my, my take on it, you know, on the funding. Thank you, Yoweng. That's actually very a practical take on the funding. I could, <laughs> couldn't agree with you more. That's really, really true, actually. Yes, and maybe Nico, you could help uh, to give some kind of tips and also uh, on the research that you did, because I understand that you made this film quite a long time ago. Um, I've used, uh, okay. I've used uh, two kinds. I, I, for my first short that I sent to festivals, I did a crowdfunding. And I worked with a lot of friends. That was that was a way to to do it. Uh, the last one I self financed because questions of, of time. Also, I wanted to do it uh, very fast. I put on my own, my own money to do it, and I do it as an investment. And I think 
uh, I think you have to do it. You have to, if you, if you don't believe in your project, nobody's going to believe in it. Nobody's going to believe. You have to believe it yourself. Uh, so you have to find it however, you know, and, and, and there's, all, there's always ways for, for, it depends on each project. Maybe one is, I couldn't do two crowdfundings, uh, one after the other, because all my uh, friends already gave. Uh, I think you have to wait a little bit. Once you do one, you, you do one, you wait, they like it, and then you can do a, a second one. Uh, so this one, because of the timing, because of what's happening, I, I, I sell finance. And I think um, as, as, as uh, for the research, I think, uh, well, maybe on, on the other shorts is, is different. For, for me, it's a lot of like, I, I, I draw a lot from, from life experience. And then when there's, something I don't, I don't know, I, I investigate that and, and I try to learn about that. And so it varies a lot. I mean, for subjects, uh, I, it's more about my life experience, how I met with people. I, I draw a lot from, from those experiences. That, that's like research in life. Like you're living and you're researching because you're, you're speaking with people, you're meeting new people and they somehow make it into the story. Um, so it, it varies a lot on your theme. I, I think for maybe for you, he, he had to do a lot of research for, 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 his, uh, for the subject matter uh, when you want to treat some things with, with respect and, and, and give like the whole uh, idea on, on a problem like that. You have to do a lot of research. So it varies a lot. It varies a lot on, 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 on what, you, what your project is. Thank you, Nico. Yes, uh, I also agree with you more. Uh, usually also filmmaker Indonesia will actually ask for their friends' funnies first. <laughs> ask for the closest inner circle. That's actually the best way of funding your film. <laughs> okay, now uh, how about you, Yudis? Bagaimana, Yudis? Waktu pendanaan filmnya sendiri, uh, bagaimana kamu? Apakah juga dari teman-teman, kayak seperti Nico tadi, atau... Ada bantuan dari orang tua mungkin atau bagi atau crowdfunding tadi sudah dibilang juga bagaimana? Uh, kalau aku aku datang dari uh, komunitas film di uh, tempatku namanya Wani namanya Wani berani jadi waktu itu uh, dari situ kita ngumpulin uang kita uh, ngerjain bareng-bareng. Uh, dari masa riset sampai film itu jadi di edit dan distribusi itu kita bareng-bareng semuanya untuk pendanaan sampai tempat sampai uh, mencari cash semuanya itu kita kolektif patungan bareng-bareng gitu sih jadi sama kayak Diko terima kasih Yudis ya yes, patungan is the best potluck yeah. Yeah. Urungan, urungan. Urungan, urungan. Okay, thank you, Yudis. Uh, Jorgen, what about you? And also with the integral film that you, the company that you made. Uh, yes. Um, funding is a, it's a, it's a main international problem, of course. And and uh, if you are in film because you want to be rich, you have to find another job. <laughs> Um, that's for sure. Uh, filmmaking is a it's a it's a tough it's a tough business, and um, that's why young filmmakers have to start with making short films. Uh, basically, because it needs less money, and often you can see that uh, short films is made in um, as a solidarity work between people that are working in film together. You know, you have photographers, directors, group of people that are working together because they want to create films. They want to create good films. They want to express themselves through films. And, uh, and as Yu Weng said, the first thing is, of course, if your film has a specific topic, you have to first go to the organizations or the people that are involved in that topic. And one way is just, of, of course, to ask them uh, to contribute with money. But another thing, you, another way of doing it, you can ask, for example, if there are several organizations that are working on this topic, you can ask them if they want to be a part of an advisory board or advisory group for the film. You know, you can involve them in the filmmaking in a way. And then they have a position there, then they can have their name there. And then uh, it can also perhaps be easier to, to ask them to, to donate some, uh, some uh, sponsor the film too. 
So this is the first uh, first uh, first way I think. And then the second is of course uh, some uh, countries they have national or regional film institutes that are giving away some money to people that want to make film. And uh, the, here we have the National Film Institute and they will not really support young filmmakers if they don't have a track record. And the only way to build a track record is through short films. So they have to prove themselves as, uh, as good filmmakers through making short film with less money. And, uh, and then uh, a friend of mine here, a colleague, a young colleague, he made a wonderful little film, 10 minutes. And it has been now screened in different festivals. And then now recently, only a couple of months ago, he got the phone from uh, Hollywood. I've seen your short film. It's a wonderful story. Can you make it into a feature film? You know, so this can happen, you know? If you work hard enough and uh, you're persistent on, uh, on the, the quality on, in all, on all levels, you know, you have to be, re it has to be good sound, the correct music, it has to be good film, uh, film, uh, film photography, you know, and then you can really, um, then people will uh, discover it and see it. Thank you. Yes, I, yes, I agree with you. If you make something with all of your heart and also all, give all of your effort, I think that will definitely show us into the work that you did. And sorry, and yes, um, we have other questions, but I think this has been answered. Uh, also from uh, UDs, the genre comedy, it has been answered by UDs and also uh, the sensitive issues of, to all of the panelists, we have answered that too. And I think, uh, I, oh yeah, one last question. I hope this is very last guys, please. <laughs> this is like one last question. <laughs> to every filmmaker in the panel who wishes to share what kind of film that you have been wanting to make but have not got the chance to do? Maybe uh, we can start with Nico. Uh, yes, so right now um, I'm actually doing it. I'm writing it since the pandemic has stopped some of my projects. I had, uh, I've been writing a, 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 long, a longer film uh, that's, that's what I've been wanting to do. And the subject is immigration and I'm, I'm writing on it and, and I'm very happy because uh, it's a theme that, that is really, well, I, I'm an immigrant. I've been an immigrant. I've been uh, somebody that comes back to this country. I'm somebody that, uh, that, uh, that's that been in many different places. And, and, and I wanna draw from that to tell the story from, from a personal point of view of, of immigration. Um, so it will be a little difficult. It will be uh, two countries, but I think you have to first dream whatever you dream, and then you, you, you the problems you'll solve them later. You, you don't limit yourself because you think, oh no, this idea. Well, maybe you'll write it. Uh, it will be too difficult to do. But there's other ideas that don't limit your ideas. That's that's, that's kind of like I'm not limiting myself at this moment to to do it. So hopefully. Uh, I, and, and I intend to do it. And I think you have, you have to believe like that way for other filmmakers. Believe that your idea, you have to believe you're gonna make it. Don't, sometimes you're like, oh yeah, it's so difficult. I'll just write it. But I, if, if somebody likes it, I'll do it. No, if somebody likes, no, doesn't like it, you go to the next person, to the next person. And if there's no one, uh, you do it. So that's how I, I'm approaching writing this. I mean, I'm gonna, Two things. I'm, I'm going to write what I want, what what I, what I see, what I have in my mind, and second, I will do it in any in, in any way of like by any means necessary. And I think that's how independent filmmakers should approach every idea. Thank you, Nico. That's very inspiring, actually. And also now, uh, Jorgen, I since you just also finished uh, your recent feature film. Maybe yeah, is there yeah, anything yeah. else that you want to portray? Uh, I think uh, Nicholas put it uh, in, a, in a good way. This pandemic period has perhaps made it possible for us to sit down, <laughs> do nothing <laughs> for a while, and then we can think about what we what we want to do and what we can dream about doing uh, yeah. when we hopefully can get out in the world again. Uh, but you know, there are so many stories out there 
this is the most important thing. You know, we are basically a, a, a company that is making documentary films. So the two films we are finishing now and launching next year, they're both documentaries. And um, when you start looking around you, there are so many beautiful stories, uh, strong stories, uh, tough stories to tell. We have a world that is uh, growing problems with uh, suppression, dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, you know, and, and uh, so many inequality is growing all over the world. So there are so many good topics to be told. And um, also, if you are, are on the creative side and you want to do a fiction film, it's just to believe in yourself and uh, and uh, and follow your ideas and your your. And if you're a filmmaker, you have to be a creative person, and then you just have to go for it, you know, and totally believe in your. Uh, and if you have problems with writing them, write them together with other people, you know. R Work in team. Don't be alone with your ideas. Work in team. That is also a good good way of doing it and developing things and sharpening it, sharpening your ideas. You know. Thank you. Thank you, Jorgen. And Yudis, ada film yang ingin dibuatkah? Yang belum kesampaian sampai saat sekarang masih di mute, Yudis. Oke. Okay. Sebenarnya ada, itu udah ini cerita lama banget dan ini uh, agak lumayan sulit untuk membuat film ini karena uh, sulit untuk mencari cashnya karena ini cerita yang eksklusif karena ini filmnya karena ini ceritanya berasal dari uh, kisah hidup saya jadi uh, <laughs> agak narsis ya tapi sebenarnya ini terinspirasi dari kisah hidup saya. Uh, Uh, anyway, aku ini gay dan saat remaja pernah mengalami trouble as a gay sebagai gay dan uh, ya saya mau membuat itu dan ingin membuatnya secara serius dalam format film pendek. Gitu sih. Oke, okay, Yudi semoga berhasil. Uh, let us know aja nanti kalau sudah jadi ya. <laughs> Oke, okay, Yuen, how about you? Is there any films that you want to make that haven't got a chance yet to be made? <laughs> Sorry, I just I think there was a bit of a lapse there. A bit of a oh, Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but... um, just just to say, I mean, I I got into filmmaking late in my life uh, because um, my background has nothing to do with films. Uh, it was very uh, technical stuff, um, uh, into accounting and very boring things, you know, construction and things like that. So getting into film was was something I wanted to do when I was young but never did. So this was a, a great, you know, personal kind of, you know, joy to be able to be involved with these films that I've done. I mean, I've only done two, but they've both given me a lot of pleasure, uh, a lot that I've learned because, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I want to do a film, but the learning process, you know, that you get is, is incredible. I mean, you know, the first film, uh, Secret Child that I did, was, you know, so intense. You know, I, I, we spent months preparing for it. And when it was all done, you know, I was exhausted. <laughs> and so I think it, it's, for me, it's very interesting to do films, uh, but very much so I want to learn. I want to challenge myself. And in terms of, top, you know, the genres that I've done, maybe, maybe the, the film that I would, That, that I would like to do maybe would be in the genre of horror, which I've never done before. But I, I'm fascinated by using horror to put across a point. Maybe um, there is a topic that's on the back of my mind, which I want to, to kind of put it out there in the world. Uh, it's a little bit of a taboo topic, but uh, I want to make it into like a horror film to make this point. Uh, Uh, so it's it's in it's in my mind how to approach it, but I haven't really got 
things down on paper as yet. Yeah, you know, it's it takes a lot of time to prepare all these things. Uh, and possibly another one which I, I like to do is uh, to do with dance, something that is very physical, that uh, the expression is not so much through words, but through the expression of your body. So I, I like to maybe explore a little bit into that area. Um, but uh, again, you know, you need inspiration. The idea of using a, a way of finding something is there, but then to how, how I can narrate the story or narrate the point is another. So there's a lot more work yet to be done on my side to, to, to try to get these things done. Thank you, Yuen, yes. Uh, I would love to see the dance and also, you know what, horror film is actually the most box office films in Indonesia, so that would oh, work well okay. here. <laughs> yes, oh, indeed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a horror film with a social protest in it, that would be even great. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that, it is a, it's a kind of slightly taboo topic. People don't talk much about it, but it's actually sure. about uh, disabled children. Um, and I want to use uh, uh, how in some parts of the world, disabled children are actually, um, hidden from society. Yes. And I just want to use this as a, a way of making a horror film. And I think to make the point about these hidden children, but it's, yeah, it's in the pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. We're looking forward to see that. <laughs> it resonates well here because yes, here also uh, uh, disabled people are hidden and sometimes they are even chained in some isolated area. So this is something that we are still fighting in this festival. Now we have come to an end actually. Uh, yes, uh, this has been such a wonderful, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm lost for words. I don't know how to conclude. I don't want to conclude anything because everything that what you guys said is very precious and it's very uh, uplifting. And, and now I want to make movies somehow. I don't know how, but <laughs> I can only do a programming of film, but then the, that's why I'm waiting for the films from all of you guys. And I love short films, as you guys mentioned. How, as what Jorgen said, uh, Churchill will need a lot of time to uh, make a short a five minute speech and to make a very impactful film in such a very limited time. This is something that's wow, it's incredible. Thank you so much for joining the 100% webinar. Um, my host Farhan is actually aiming something like this. So I think uh, he wanted to do a kind of photo session. So please Farhan, maybe you can kindly uh, cue us to do the photo op before we end the session. Hello everyone. Wait. So we are going to do the photo session. Please stand still in your camera and I will count to three to avoid any delay. One, two, three. Oh, our interpreter is fine. Okay. One more? One more. One, two, three. Okay, now I will call the sign interpreter to come to to join us for the photo. Chindra. And Mbak Esti. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much, guys. This has been such a wonderful evening. <laughs> and thank you for spending the Friday night and Friday uh, afternoon for <laughs> Jorgen and Yeweng uh, with us in 100% uh, webinar in 100% Manusia Film Festival. For all of our audience, uh, please note that the film, the screenshot film, all the selected five films are still available until the next five days, until the 9th of December. And the tickets are still available, so you can directly go to festivalscope.com to watch the festival, uh, to watch the films online. 
And uh, Farhan just also notified me that we have a winner. Oh ya, yeah, pemenang dari Q&A uh, hari ini adalah uh, Liz Mendenhall, lalu ada juga uh, Siti Fadila, dan ada juga uh, Jaya Andriguna dan uh, Levina. Semuanya menang di sini. <laughs> Sama, terima kasih, terima kasih. Oh ya, yeah. terima kasih. I need to learn also the the sign language. This is very interesting. Ya, yeah. uh, terima kasih banyak kepada para panelis. Uh, terima kasih sudah hadir malam ini memeriahkan uh, edisi keempat dari 100% Manusia Film Festival. Terima kasih sekali sudah uh, menghadiri sesi yang sangat menyenangkan ini di mana kita jadi semakin termotivasi untuk membuat karya-karya yang bagus, yang bisa menyentuh hati semua orang, uh, dan juga uh, film-film yang menarik untuk ditonton. Nah, buat teman-teman semuanya, kita masih ada uh, film-film di 100% Manusia Film Festival. Kita uh, Besok kita akan ada film-film lainnya juga yang bisa ditonton. Di, langsung, segera, uh, per, langsung segera daftar booking tiketnya di festivalscope.com. Uh, aduh, saya uh, lupa filmnya apa aja. <laughs> Padahal saya kepala program filmnya. Ada banyak filmnya. Ada 5 film pendek dan ada 10 uh, film panjang. Termasuk kemarin kita sudah membuka dengan film Stars by the Pound. Dan kita akan menutup dari Prancis Dan kita akan menutup dengan film dari Kanada, Stage Mother. Lalu uh, malam hari ini kita ada film Screenshot. Kompilasi dari 5 film pendek pilihan. Dan uh, juga ada... Oh ya, dan oh ya, dan juga ada dokumenter yang saya, uh, kesukaan saya, Sime, uh, tentang uh, tentang HIV AIDS yang dibuat oleh uh, saudara Andy Cohen. Dan besok kita ada film yang bisa ditonton semuanya, yaitu ada Too Far Away, dan juga ada film tentang uh, isu uh, mental health, King of Atlantis. Dan kita juga ada lagi hari Minggu uh, banyak film lainnya. Kita juga akan ada film dari Indonesia dari uh, Stradara Dirmawan Hatta sebelum berangkat atau dalam bahasa Inggrisnya In God's Design dan juga ada malamnya ada film dari Inggris uh, Ray and Liz itu adalah film yang sangat menarik untuk ditonton uh, lalu hari Senin kita ada film apa lagi Farhan? saya harus tanya dulu <laughs> Masih banyak film lainnya, silahkan langsung pergi ke festivalscope.com atau langsung ke website kami di www.100%manusia.com Di situ ada uh, seluruh film-film yang bisa ditonton line up-nya untuk festival kita kali ini. Sementara besok kita masih ada acara Fringe Event lainnya. Besok kita ada 100% Exhibition Leka Putra Through the Window. Uh, di uh, acara ini kita bisa melihat karya dari... Uh, artis Leka Putra yang juga membuat key visual dari festival kita uh, tahun ini. Ini dia festival <laughs> karyanya Leka Putra dan kali ini dia berusaha mengcapture atau menangkap bagaimana ekspresi orang-orang ketika berada di dalam rumah uh, dalam tanda kurung uh, dalam tanda kutip terkungkung di, dan bagaimana dia melihat uh, kehidupan di luar sana dari balik jendela. Lalu malamnya kita juga bisa ngobrol bareng di 100% nyinyir tentang life censorship. Seperti apa sih kehidupan yang disensor, terutama budaya censorship sangat kental diimplikasikan oleh negara kita, tidak hanya dalam hal sensor di film atau di karya seni, tapi juga disensor dalam kehidupan sehari-hari. Jadi besok ada acara itu, lalu hari Minggu juga kita masih ada acara 100% all you can read in the publisher, di mana kita akan membahas buku-buku yang uh, bersama Mas Roni dari margin kiri dan juga uh, host uh, penulis cerita anak Rizal Iwan. Di sini kita akan membahas buku-buku yang uh, tanda kutip berani di Indonesia dan uh, berani dalam arti kata mereka berhasil mengangkat isu-isu yang sensitif, isu-isu yang juga terkadang agak uh, sedikit uh, apa ya? Mungkin disensor juga, <tapi>, tapi di sini kita ingin mengangkat juga bahwa keberanian dalam berkarya tidak hanya melulu lewat film, tapi bisa juga lewat buku. 
dan juga kita ada uh, di hari Minggu itu ada 100% express to impress 100% express to impress dengan Inkana featuring Imada di mana Inka akan menyanyikan lagu-lagu yang sudah kalian uh, book sebelumnya kalau nggak salah sudah dua tiga minggu lalu ya teman-teman oke okay. itu adalah acara kami di weekend ini silakan ikutan silakan langsung bergabung uh, keduanya ada di uh, semuanya ada di Instagram di at 100% manusia silakan bergabung di sana terima kasih banyak buat pendukung setia kami movies that matter European Union British Council Cinemax Cinefirst InfoScreen Kincir, Magdalene, Mokino, Display, Tikinot.com. Bentar. Saya takut salah, jadi mendingan saya buka juga aja daftarnya ini. Daripada saya takut salah sebut. Oke. Okay. Canadian Embassy in Europe, Erasmus Huys, the French Embassy, the Netherlands Embassy, the Swedish Embassy, Amsterdam France and Donesi. Kekini ruang bersama, Kemala Home Living, Klinik Angsa Merah, Amnesty International, Arus Pelangi, Kontras, LBH Jakarta, LBHF, FKWI, Margin Kiri, Selatan Cafe, Texture, Integral Pictures, Emapil, dan Tumbuh Sinema Rakyat. Terima kasih atas uh, semua dukungannya selama ini sudah mau mendukung 100% Manusia Film Festival dan uh, tadi saya juga sudah uh, mengumumkan pemenangnya nanti akan dihubungi oleh uh, tim admin kami. Terima kasih atas kehadirannya. Saya Menina Putri Wismurti, undur diri. Enjoy the festival and let us know your thoughts, your feedbacks in our all of our social media accounts. And yes, stay safe, stay sane, wear your mask on. Bye-bye. Il fallait aussi que je prenne la fer pour les milliards de dans ma tête. Oh. J'ai 20 ans, euh, je viens de Belgique euh, et je suis actrice. What is your dream film project? My dream is to work in as many countries as possible, in as many languages as possible. I'm writing on it. One that I would make. Working in Spain with uh, Ken Loach doing Land and Freedom was possibly my dream for film project. My dream is to be in a Star Wars film. To play in a movie where I'm like a female Joker or something, like very dark. Maybe I, I want to play a woman one day. That would be beautiful. To have opportunity to do this job, that's all. I would like to make an historic movie. Sci-fi movie. I love science fiction. That is the film that I know will become a success before I make it. I'm working on it right now, maybe. All the film I didn't do yet. It's always the next film. It's always about the next film. We all love stories. We all love stories. We all love stories. We all love stories. We